Okay, so today we're talking about Doty Call. That is basically Doty copy on write. Okay, and um, this is actually basically an application of the race conditions um, uh, issue that uh, presents in, uh, that is present in OS. Uh, I have actually gone through uh, race conditions before in one of the previous videos. So if you have any doubts, you can refer to that once and then come back to this video because this is an application of the race condition which is present in um, uh, the Linux systems. So uh, Dirty Copy on Write is all a game of uh, the virtual memory and the physical memory. So we all know that uh, there are multiple files that have access to similar or shared resources. Okay. Now these resources, each file is targeting different locations of probably the same resource, but copies of that same resource in the virtual memory. However, in the physical memory, there is only one of it present. So now copies of the files from the physical memory into the virtual memory for um, other resources to access these copies can be done in two different ways. One is a shared map and one is a private map. So these two are the types of uh, mapping that happens between the uh, physical and the virtual memory. But in case of dirty car, you need two main things that should happen to um, actually allow this attack to work. First is that instead of shared map, it should be a private mapping. And secondly, there is something called as um, advice, M advice. So you are advising um, the map about something. So we'll come to this. First, let's understand the map private. So these two conditions are very important to actually um, let Dirty Cow work. So let's understand the mapping part of it. Okay, so uh, when you're doing M, so M map is what is basically mapping these things and M map has these particular uh, parameters that go through. So this is basically, the null is basically the start address of the map memory. Then you have the size of the map memory. Then you have whether the file that I'm talking about is readable or writable. So the thing you use .dcal for is actually uh, making a readable file only, okay, and actually a being able to edit it. Thus, the main attack is making a readable only file. I mean, basically editing it, writing on this readable only file is the main attack that Dirty Cow helps in doing. The other parameters that are passing through is whether this mapping is shared or mapping of the physical memory to the virtual memory is a shared map or a private map. Like I said, it will only help if it's a private map and I'll tell you how. Then goes the file or uh, that is to be mapped and of course the offset. So these two you can right now not consider because these are just general parameters that go through. So what happens in the shared memory is you are updating anything to the mapped memory. It also updates in the shared physical memory. So you're sharing the physical memory in this case. So this usually happens in um, files that also have the right permission. So in that case, it's sorted because uh, you have given it permission to have any change. So it changes the original file and all other resources are at the same time aware of this change. So no, we all know one funny thing about uh, optimization is where your map private comes into play. So when you're mapping privately, what you're doing basically is you're forking the particular process that you want to share as well as you're using mmap with uh, meme copy basically, which is memory copy, which is again, you know, vulnerable in itself. So uh, once this uh, process is forked as a parent and a child and you're mapping it privately, what happens is that the memory copy is actually a time consuming process, right? So what the OS does to optimize this time consumption is it delays the allocation of new memory till there is actually a write. Okay, so till there is a write process that has been claimed, what it does is it does a read only for uh, both the files that are accessing this uh, shared resource and once uh, either of the processes 
say that now I want to write to the memory like basically you're saving the file in that case what happens is then it will allocate new physical uh, new uh, memory new physical memory so and it updates the page table that you know that I have updated a new physical uh, memory al allocation so now when I am I'm writing to uh, the, f the shared resource what will do is this write function will allocate new memory okay and then the page table will update from uh, uh, you know uh, reading into the virtual memory where uh, the mapping was done to allocate a new physical space for it and then the write will actually take place that it will write to the memory so now how will you use this as an attack okay and that is the main important thing so you have to understand that this uh, process these three stages that's happening in this write is one single process the, this thing is supposed to be together right so the minute you do write this three happens at the same time so the attack happens when is here is where your race conditions or time of check to time of use comes in so if you not aware of what this is please refer to the link in the description i've actually explained this very much in detail so you'll know better so what's happening is at the time of this first write getting executed it is checking that probably a file that is f1 is only read only okay so in that case it will not allow this thing to write it here but what if in between here okay i am similar to the symlink thing that we've spoken about i am creating a separate file f2 which has read and write permissions so at this moment my physical memory is i mean my uh, page table is pointing to the physical memory for file 2 it has allocated a new space okay so here now it checks for write that for file 2 which is in the uh, 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 memory in this mapping I have got privately mapped and it has like I said it has uh, it was privately mapped and it has read and write permissions okay so it passes the check here so now it has read and write permissions check passed so time of check the check has passed correct now what it does it simply goes through this entire process but what if just before writing to memory i can cut this process here okay and somehow make this redirect to this back to f1 so the page table is going back to f1 which is a read only file now what's happening is since it was privately mapped and it is part of the same process at this point when i'm writing to memory there is not really a check whether there is it is a read only file or a read write permission file so that at the time of use that is at the time of actually writing to memory there is no secondary check whether uh, uh, i'm uh, uh, you know whether this particular file has read or write permissions or not now this is where the point where you want to break this okay again you're racing so this is the race condition which we're talking about you're racing such that within the process you somehow are able to break in between this point exactly okay so as to make the page uh, table direct back to the read only file that is where your m advice comes in the second thing that we spoke about that is important and required so in m advice what happens is again like a map there's the address the size and going and an advice uh, parameter that goes by so in this advice if i do m advice that is memory advice advising the memory that i don't need the physical memory that was being allocated very specifically now that i uh, you know actually enabled the write 
See, you are advising the this thing, uh, the memory, that I don't need it. Okay. So what it does is that the processes page table will basically point to the original physical memory. So the minute you say I am advising the memory that I don't need it, it will go back to the original physical memory that is F1, which was what a read only file. So technically not supposed to be able to write to it. But like I said, the time of check, the time of use issue comes here. And at the time of check it passed, but at the time of use, we are not checking it again. And as a result in this read only file, you are actually writing it up. So whatever change you were actually making here, you can edit it to be here. So what sort of files are you planning? Like the very basic example is your password file, for example, right? That's a read only file. But if you're creating another file, editing stuff here, okay, which is in your version memory, then you uh, uh, write to it. What happens is this particular memory gets allocated. But what you do is simultaneously raise a um, M-advice uh, condition to raise this um, uh, process that's going on such that at one point in the race, you just need one failure, I mean, one time for it to match, right? At one point, you will find that um, uh, the M advice cuts exactly here and it has changed the um, page table back from here, the new, uh, newly allocated memory to the old memory. And he's simply able to write to memory and thereby editing the password file itself. So basically you will have all user access again. So that's sort of the basic attack, how it works. So in short, when you're mapping privately, uh, what happens is that there is no check uh, before this third process, the third sub process in the write process. Uh, and it assumes that the write will definitely be on the private copy only. Okay, so it assumes this and it does not recheck at this point. As a result, you can raise another process or another thread at the same time that is a uh, memory advice saying that, okay, I don't need the new allocated space. So when the page table comes here at this point, point two page table is at the new place. And you're racing the second process. You raise the second process to change the pointer back to your previous physical memory. Okay. And then the third process takes place that this, it writes to memory. So you're done. You could change, um, uh, you could actually write into a non uh, writable file.